everybody. As you can see from the topic of this video, it's about homeschooling regulations and a response to the Harvard Homeschool Summit. Now, I've had some people ask me about this. I've actually tried to do this video a few times, but I get really impassioned and the last couple times I tried to do this video I got pretty upset and I rambled and it wasn't a very clear or concise video so what I'm going to try and do now is try and be very um, straightforward about it uh, of course here you go okay it says nothing in the world is difficult if one sets his mind to it Read the down piece. I did. Nothing in the world is difficult if one sets his mind to it. Okay. And then that has lucky numbers in the back. Lucky number? Mm -hmm. Okay. We had Chinese last night as a treat. We are house sitting. And so we got Chinese food for everybody, and it was uh, for my niece. So that's what he's doing. He's wanting me to read all the fortune cookies. Um, so anyway, you'll probably have some back and forth of that. That's just par for the course if I'm doing a video. All right. So for those of you who do not know what's going on or what I'm referring to, Harvard Law School child advocacy program is hosting a homeschooling summit problems politics and prospects for reform it was scheduled for june 18th through 19th in 2020 but it says due to covid 19 the june 2020 event is postponed Mama, that is smart. before you can do something you must first be something numbers on the back. 16, 5, 13, 7, 36, 28. Here you go. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, it says that the point of this summit, the focus will be on problems of educational deprivation and child maltreatment that too often occur under the guise of homeschooling in a legal environment of minimal or no oversight. The people who are hosting this, Elizabeth Bartholet, or Bartholet, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, um, in the videos I've seen talking about this, it's pronounced both ways, I don't know. But anyway, she has a editorial or paper coming out in the Arizona Law Review this year, or it's come out called homeschooling P parent rights absolutism versus child rights to education and protection so this entire thing is trying to make it sound like homeschooling is the opposite of a child's rights to education and protection that children who are homeschooled don't have education and protection and then pretty much everybody on this list is against homeschooling. They are not sharing the other side of homeschooling. In fact, there are people who are pro-homeschooling who are doctors and lawyers and professors and the like who have reached out and said, hey, we would love to speak at this event. We would love to be there and actually have an actual discussion. Now, if you really are concerned about the safety and education of children in homeschool, why not have the other side of that's pro-homeschool and then you all come together and discuss ways that we can protect that very small percentage of homeschool children who are abused. Just like in public school, there are organizations that are fighting against child abuse in public school. There's SESAME, I can't remember exactly what it stands for, it's S-E-S-A-M-E, -E. but they are fighting against the huge number of children who are abused in public school. 
So if that was actually what the goal was, why would they not work with homeschooling families and homeschooling experts to create an organization that is um, looking out for the small percentage of children who are abused in homeschooling? Because that's not the goal. That's not the goal. The goal is to abolish homeschooling. To give you an idea. Oh, more thank fortune you. cookies. We don't have any more fortune cookies, honey. Where did they go? We ate them. Who ate them? Mostly you. I did. Mm hmm. <laughs> okay. Go eat your apple, dude. Yes. He does have an apple. <laughs> oh, bless it. Crab them. Eat your apple. Okay. Well, after the apple's eaten, then we can discuss it. So. Oh, bless it. Goodness gracious. I know. My allergies are messing me up, too. So, homeschool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My coffee's right here. Uh, Legal Defense Association, I think is what it stands for. HSLDA. I get their newsletter. This is actually the first time I heard I'm about this. Dude. dude. You're going to knock over my coffee. That's what's going to happen. Whoopee! I'm supposed to kiss. Yeah, give me a kiss. Go play. Oh, I got you. You're okay. All right. So they shared, because, you know, I wouldn't know who these people are if I just read the Homeschool Summit's page. I'd be like, who are these people? Um, they break it down and kind of introduce some of the people that are included. And James Dwyer is the other person hosting the event, from what I understand. And that's from what I understand from the Homeschool Summit website. And I will link this stuff below. Um, is famous for claiming the reason parent-child relationships exist is because the state confers legal parenthood. In his 1994 Law Review article, Parents, Religion, and Children's Welfare, Debunking the Doctrine of Parent Rights, argued the claim that parents should have child-rearing rights rather than simply being permitted to perform parental duties and to make certain decisions on a child's behalf in accordance with the child's rights is inconsistent with principles deeply embedded in our law and morality. Just to give you an idea of where he's coming from. And then... There's, there's a few others that it's just like, what is going on? What's ironic about the fact that Harvard is hosting this summit is that not that long ago, Harvard was actually seeking out homeschool students. They were talking about how homeschool students are the future of college and how excellent they are with academics and you know, they're far ahead of their peers when it comes to um, learning or adapting to a college environment and so on and so forth. So, here's, here's the deal. I don't agree with everybody that's speaking out against this. They're, and that's kind of like my issue with what's going on on YouTube. Yeah, I see you. Um, that, you know what, here, let me backtrack just a second. There's one more thing I want to share with you all. And it's from Harvard Magazine. And this is what actually upset me the most. It's the risks of homeschooling. Again, I will link this below. The Risks of Homeschooling by Aaron O'Donnell. And this was released in the May-June 2020 on harvardmagazine.com. And what really bothered me in this one, let me see if I can find the direct quote about it. Because it's absolutely just appalling. It's appalling not only for me as a homeschooling parent, but it's appalling as somebody who writes articles and has written articles. You know, if I tried to make claims like this bullshit, then I, you know, I probably wouldn't be writing very long. Okay, here it is. Okay. 
But surveys of homeschoolers show that a majority of such families, and she's referring to homeschool families, by some estimates up to 90%, she doesn't link where she's getting that statistic at all. There's no, she's making it up, or somebody else is. There's no link to that statistic anywhere in here. But by some estimates, up to 90% are driven, driven by conservative Christian beliefs and seek to, the, to remove their children from mainstream culture. Bartholet notes that some of these parents are extreme religious ide ideologues who question science and promote female subservience and white supremacy. So, 90% of us homeschool parents are conservative Christian white supremacists teaching female subservience and abusing our kids is what's being passed in this article. 90% of us. Um, I know a majority <laughs> of liberal Ding. homeschool families and many of the ones I talk to are pagan. Far more than 10%. And the ones who are not pagan, a lot of them are atheist, some are Muslim, some are Jewish. Um, there are people who I've talked to within homeschool groups that I'm part of. I'm a, kind of a hermit, so I'm not actually part of a lot of in-person groups yet. Um, we had hoped to do that this year, but then the pandemic hit, and it's like, well, plans. Best laid plans. Oh. There you go. Throw that in the sink, please. It's got ice. Um... But the, there's so many that do not fit that 90%. And it's just, it's just bullshit. It's just bullshit. And it just angers me that Harvard, like, come on, y'all. If you're gonna, if you're gonna post absolute nonsense, at least pretend that the people who you're writing this about aren't illiterate. Oh, but they do think we're illiterate. Where was it? It was saying it's pretty much that parents who pretty much can't read or write themselves or are expected to teach their children they can't read or write. Anyway, it's disgusting. What was interesting about all of this is the response. They had to shut down the comments on that article. They postponed the summit, and this was kind of back-to-back. -back. Now, they can make whatever claims they want to make about how and why they did that, but... Yeah. I, I somehow doubt it was just, you know, something that they felt they needed to do. So, that's what's going on. I've had three or four people ask me... Um, I've had three or four people ask me for my response on this. And I find it interesting, the timing. The timing of the summit, and I'm not the only person that's pointed this out, the timing of the summit is very poor. <laughs> Every child is at home right now. <laughs> schooling. Well, okay, so they might not be now, because it's you know, it's May 16th. I had to double check. I thought it was 15th. All right. It's May 16th. A lot of kids have um, wrapped up their online schooling or homework or whatever it is that's going on with public schools, sending home, have wrapped it up for the year. They're having early summer break with hopes that come August they'll be able to go back to school. But when this was all coming out back in March, in April, all kids were home. All kids were schooling at home. Now, it wasn't really homeschooling. That's a whole nother conversation. Um, and one I've actually had with a few parents that know that I homeschool. Now, I homeschool a preschooler. It's a very different situation. But it's not necessarily the same thing. Hey, kiddo. That's enough hair brushing. 
Don't lose my brush. Okay, brush it just a little bit more and then make sure you put it right back, please. Thank you. Okay, cool. I hear him messing with my hairbrush bag and stuff. We're house sitting, so all of our stuff is in a weird place right now. Anyway, so they were asking for my opinion on it. And it's disgusting. It's ironic that they chose this time period. Or maybe, I mean, I'm sure they chose this and then the pandemic happened and kind of made what they were doing look a little ridiculous and put it it didn't look sane before but now it definitely looks ridiculous but I think it's also a matter of they're scared because homeschooling is on a rise it's at a rise I'm getting a notification that the camera might die on me but homeschooling's on a heavy rise because people are done and it doesn't matter if they're Christian conservatives or liberal pagans. They're done. They're done with how the system is treating our kids and the next generation. Um, I know parents who have pulled their kids out of school because their child is gay or LGBTQ. Um, tr lots of trans kids. Lots of queer kids. And they pulled them out of school for their own protection. There's a lot of people who uh, pull kids out of school for bullying issues. There's a lot of people who pull their kids out of school because of school shootings. You know, when your, when your child comes home with a little song that sounds kind of like Ring Around the Rosie, but it's all about preparing for a school shooter, it's unnerving, and they've decided to pull their kids out of school. When children are humiliated because they can't afford school lunch and are being bullied by people who are supposed to be there to feed and protect them, it's a problem. When children are being abused by their teachers and by people. Oh, you look beautiful. Thank you. Um, your stool is in that bathroom. You can look in that mirror. Okay. Let's look in the mirror because he brushed his own hair. So, I mean, there's just several instances. I shared a thing on Facebook the other day about uh, everybody, it was a whole huge long list of people sharing instances where a teacher had in some way abused them. Uh, it was mostly emotional abuse or um, psychological abuse where they made them feel like idiots or whatever and it wasn't even, they were not doing anything wrong. Things like tearing up papers because they were pretty much too academic or, you know, embarrassing a child in front of class, making a child write over and over again on a board, I am not smart, because they got the lowest grade on a, an exam. That's not okay. And so, parents are getting fed up with it. Um, and pulling their kids out of school for various reasons. And... It, like I said, it's on the rise. It's easier now to homeschool than ever, but we have to also remember homeschooling is young. Did you eat your apple? No. Well, you have to eat your apple, dude. You can't just have snack food. Um, what was I saying? Okay. So, it's at a rise, but homeschooling is still young. Like, we're talking the 80s and 90s as when homeschooling is legalized around here. Uh, in the US. Now, Utah and Nevada had homeschooling like in the 50s, but pretty much everywhere else, it wasn't until 93, uh, I might need to double check on that, 93 that it was legal. So, we're not out of the woods, <laughs> you know. Be careful, dude. Thank you, be careful. I just want to draw something. Okay, well, I will get out your drawing stuff in just a second, please. Not one of those. Mm -mm, that's that's Naki's chalks. So it's no, it's, it's new. I did blue. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're not out of the woods. So. Okay. Looks like it's about to die. So, what I want to encourage people Hi. to do is be outspoken about why you homeschool that you homeschool hey. and the benefits of homeschooling keep talking about it 
I know it's summertime, but keep talking about it. I know the pandemic has brought every kid home, and some parents are. In a minute. Some parents are feeling overwhelmed by having their kids at home all of a sudden. That is not what homeschooling is like. Even homeschool parents are having a very hard time with this pandemic, y'all. My kid is missing going to all kinds of different things. I'm not going to mention them because he's listening, and if I bring them up, it'll be a whole hour of me explaining to him again why we can't go. But it's not, this is not normal. This is not normal for us either. Uh, even hermits like me, uh, this is harrowing, but hopefully we will get through it and everything will be fine on our side as well as yours who are watching this. I hope that you and your family are in best health. But I know a lot of families are not wanting to send their kids back to school this fall. If that is the case and you are looking for homeschooling, say you were work considering homeschooling before and this was just the straw that broke the camel ba camel's back, especially since some parents are seeing the kind of schoolwork their kids have been doing and are able to sit there and listen to the online interaction between their, their, their children and their teacher. And a lot of them are thinking, all right, I really want to homeschool. Um, feel free to ask for resources and the like. I might do a video coming up talking about my favorite homeschool resources so far. Um, but for right now, that's the only way I can really think to combat this insanity that is these anti-homeschooling reformation summit. Uh, feel free to write them. They have their contact on here. Um, you know, you can you can contact Harvard uh, regarding Elizabeth Bartholet, professor of law and faculty director of the Child Advocacy Program of Harvard Law School, and James Dwyer, professor of law at William and Mary School of Law. Feel free to contact them regarding this and your thoughts on this subject. Feel free to contact the other people involved as well and make it known, hey, you are a homeschool parent, but you are not one of their fictional 90% who are, you know, white nationalists abusing your children. And I would love to see parents who, because like I said, most of what I see on YouTube regarding this are conservative Christian families discussing this, and if liberal and pagan families who homeschool leave everything up to them, uh, you know, we need our voices heard as well. People need to know of the, the beautiful diversity that is in homeschooling. That there are secular homeschoolers, there are pagan homeschoolers, and heathen homeschoolers, and, uh, you know, we exist. And um, if you have done a video or a blog post about this, especially if you are a, um, like I said, one of these 10% who are not, you know, fictional numbers, guys. Uh, please feel free to comment that below. Um, I would love to gather up some resources that are talking about this and talking about homeschooling in general from your perspective. Um, and let's share that. Let's uh, keep ourselves informed and educated. I highly recommend checking out other channels, even if you don't fully agree with their beliefs and politics on the matter. Like, there's a lot of stuff I don't agree with There's No Place at Home on, but she is on the ball <laughs> with some of this stuff, and I, I appreciate her for that. So I do watch her even though there's a lot of things that her and I don't agree on. Um, I do get newsletters from the Homeschool Law Defense Associ or Legal Defense Association, even though there's stuff that they support that I don't support. But until there is a pagan, heathen, whatever um, group that does what they do, that's, you know, that's the option I've got at the moment. Alright, thank you all so much for watching. Please feel free to comment below any other suggestions or if you have any questions about homeschooling. Um, from my perspective, if I can't answer them, I'll find somebody who can. 
So thanks for watching. Blessings.